Okay, let's return to our main text here. Let's keep reading verse 9. So, oh, we debunk two essential heresies here at verse 9, which is important. So in verse nine, so this is very important. These two doctrines are very prevalent, especially online, and Calvinism as well. So you want to pay attention to these. These are the two worst doctrines ever among dispensationalism teaching, pre-tribulation teaching. One is the post-tribulation doctrine. The other one, which you want to know, is called replacement theology. It is called replacement theology. And this passage is a favorite passage used by replacement theology. Let's read this. So the church of Smyrna, God knows them by their works and their persecution. And what? By their poverty. So these were very poor people. Because during the timeline of the... So when we're going, remember, we're going by what? The entire church age timeline, right? So this kind of timeline would be covering AD 200 to 325. AD 200 to 325. This was a timeline of the 10 great persecutions, they called it. But we'll come to that later. There were 10 big persecutions that time under these... Uh, Emperors, uh, my advice is this. you got to study history. A lot of people don't get into history. Oh, history is boring, you know. Well, you got to realize this. Study history, and it's going to show you a lot of important things of what, how it relates to you. Like Dr. Rutman once said, what men learn from history is that men never learn from history. That's the thing. So if you read this timeline, it's going to be very interesting about these 10 Roman, uh, these during the timelines of 10 Roman emperors who persecuted Christians. One of them was so bloody that lions could not eat any more Christians. That's how messed up it was. That lions, when they, they let the lions loose out of their cage, the lions, they just bypassed the Christians. They didn't want to eat them. In fact, so many Christians were being tortured and killed that some of the Roman senates and officials begged the emperors to stop the persecution, not kill any more Christians. That's how bad it was. So they were so busy studying dispensational truth that time, I think, right? No, during that time, everyone was running for their lives. But the more that they killed and persecuted Christians, the more that Christianity grew. Amen. And shamefully, they do a lot better than dispensational, Bible-believing Christians who have all the truth. And because we have all the truth, we should know better and do better than these people. It's a shame. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Fox's Book of Martyrs will tell you about that. I mean, this information I'm giving to you is from Fox's Book of Martyrs. It's a great story. I mean, there's this one time uh, person, so this is not in Fox's Book of Martyrs, but it's a different story. But there was this person, I don't know if it's really true, but I heard that there was a story of a person who was responsible for making the dimensions and setting up the parameters and then a construction map of the Colosseum. And this Colosseum was where the Christians were killed and persecuted at the end. The person who was responsible for building that, when he later saw that Christians were getting killed and persecuted in the Colosseum that he contributed to building, he got under conviction and he became a saved Christian. I think he even died in his own Colosseum that he built as well. But in Fox's Book of Martyrs, it records that when Christians were being killed and persecuted, that one of the pagans got up in the middle of the Colosseum, this bloodthirsty mob that was shouting for blood, one of the pagans got up and he said, great is the God of the Christians. And they killed him too after that. There are, I mean, this will put you under conviction, friend. I mean, I have like three different sermons probably on Fox's Book of Martyrs and it's pretty much the same one. But just read, uh, just watch the sermon, it'll put you under conviction. And it's very interesting, that was pagan Rome that time. Modern Rome has not changed. Rome has always retained its power. It just changed in different forms. But anyway, AD 200 to 325, this was the timeline of, of the church being under severe persecution. Bible believers, you know what they were doing? They were being persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. These, some of these church fathers, you know what they were doing? They were stuck at home like theological scholars and because of that education and intellect became the final authority 
That's how the Catholic Church eventually seeped in. It's when the Word of God started to lose its authority and intellect education, higher education, became the final authority. Kind of makes sense why today we're in a bad day and age, right? Yes, Because we all promote about higher education. Isn't higher education good? Sure, knowing a lot more is good, but you know what people are? People are wicked at heart. That's what they don't think. So what their problem is, is their problem is because they're wicked at heart, once they know all the information, you know what's going to happen? They will tend to use knowledge to what benefits them. And don't deny that. Don't deny that. Ask every smart politician in the debate platform. You don't think they're going to argue in a way that will benefit them? Ask lawyers. You don't think that they're going to argue in a way that will benefit hey, them? You know? So here's the thing is that, so what you got to understand is this, is that when people have the knowledge and the form, you got to realize this, people are not very innocent as you might think we are. See, that's what we are. In some way or form, we want to be right when we argue. Okay, so these people, they promote a higher education and because of that, when you have higher education, the dangerous thing is this, you think you're smart enough and that's when God quits using you. When you think that you're smart, then what happens is, then you start to correct your Bible rather than the Bible correcting you. You can correct what the verse says rather than letting the verse freely speak to you and convicting you. So what these people start to do, this was a timeline when replacement theology was getting born. It was like during this timeline. What is replacement theology, Pastor? You mentioned that before, but you didn't really explain. They teach that the church replaces Israel. That doesn't make sense, Pastor. You're right. A person who has rocks for brains will even figure that out, okay? This does not mean the same thing. For some weird reason, people think Israel means the church and church means Israel. No. Why, do you, why is that a no, Pastor? Because that's common sense. No. You don't need to know Bible to know that. But number two, the reason why they promote replacement theology is because they, the, they want the church to replace the promises that God has given to the Jews, to the nation of Israel. So they want to replace those promises with themselves. So <clears throat> not only that, because there's so much verses in your Bible that has a Jewish application. If these guys get smarter in ed education, what do you think they're going to be able to figure out? They want to forcibly apply the verse to themselves when it applies to a Jew. In order to forcibly do that, you have to be very intellectual and smart to do it. So the best intellectual, intellectual way to do it is to say it in this way. The way to say it is, all of God's believers are real children of God, are real Jews, spiritual Jews. That's the intellectual way of getting around it. But no, you just leave the verses as it says. If it says church, church, Jew, and Jew, that's it. Simple as that. You don't have, we don't care how smart you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how smart you talk. I don't care how many diplomas and degrees you got. Amen. Who cares how smart you are? We don't care. God don't care. Right. The judgment seat of Christ don't care. Amen. And guess what? Lost sinners and damned souls won't even care when they see you at the judgment. Right, Naked as a jaybird. Okay, see if we all care. And the devil sure don't care how smart you are either. Yeah. All right? We don't care how smart you are to explain that verse for us, to interpret it in the way you want it, no, let the verse read for itself. Amen. When I teach you verse by verse Bible study, that's what you're going to notice about me is that I try to let the verse teach you. That's what I'm going to try to show to you. These people, they will ins once they read a passage, then they'll interpret to you what it means and that's it. Now me, what I do is that I'll go line by line and try to explain it to you so you can better understand it. But you'll notice my method. I try to explain it as the word verse wants me to say it. Well, I don't think so. Well, if you don't think so, then you look it up. Stop watching me online and saying, well, you're interpreting a verse yourself. How can you say that when you're not studying yourself? You won't know until you study for yourself. Stop watching me like a robot and look at the verse yourself and you study it. That's good. Okay, then you can start to see which one I'm wrong, which one I'm right. And maybe if you're really spiritual, you'll find out one day that I'm completely right and you'll be in the same boat with me. That's good. No, that's out of pride, right? So, 
some onliners are already mad now. Oh, I don't want to watch them anymore, okay? So I just, but the point is this. The point is, is that you let the verse read for itself, and that's the problem with these church fathers. Church fathers, that's the problem with today's Calvinists and intellectual scholars. They all sit at home. Yep. See, they weren't evangelists. This church was all about planting churches evangelism. This church, despite of persecution, grew in number of Christians. These other people were like James R. White's Alpha and Omega ministry sitting at home. Oh, you know, the way we witness is debating, debating. How many souls do you get saved out of that, huh? Exactly. No, it's just about arguing who's smarter and who wins the argument. Yep. Good for you. Two thumbs up. How many souls did you get saved? You know what we're doing to get souls saved? We try to teach people here so they can grow. We preach against their sin so it can motivate them to grow. And we try to invite other people to church. We go out street preaching even though we look like idiots so that we can spread the gospel. We knock on doors and witness to people so that we can get them saved and get them to church. We spread the stuff online so that we can try to get people to church. What are you doing, church father, sir? Oh, bleh. Oh, do it, do it. Oh, replacement theology it just makes so much sense. Oh, I talk smarter than you, so you got to listen to me. You're a man, pastor. You're really kicking them. That's right, because I'm going to show you in every church age, this higher education system is really dangerous. That's when they became the final authority, That's not God. Right. That's the purpose of higher education, building your intellect where you finally think you're smarter than God. Yep. Wow. So replacement theology is found out in this part. Let's continue reading verse 9. So this church is poor because of persecution, poverty, but thou art rich. So they're spiritually rich in Jesus Christ nevertheless. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. So there's a blasphemy going around of people saying that I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew, and are not, but they're not Jews. But are the what? Synagogue of Satan. They're, they're Satan's synagogue. Replacement theology teaches that Revelation 2.9 is referring to the nation of modern-day Israel today. The modern nation of Israel today, they think that this is referring to fake Jews. Now, you'll hear that all over online. Fake Jews, fake Jews, fake Jews, Jew-tube, Jew-tube, you know, whatever, all right? Rothschilds, the elite, the conspiracies, etc., now, you got to realize this. We, we already know this. That's right. Hollywood, the bank system, the elites, the modern nation of Israel, all that kind of stuff. Look, we the Rothschilds, we know that Satan has a dominion over all of them. Okay? But you got to realize this, is that Judas Iscariot is a Jew that the Lord chose, and Judas Iscariot is going to be the Antichrist incarnate. Yep. So it doesn't matter how wicked or evil these people are. That doesn't get them away from being a Jew, one of God's chosen people. You got to realize that these people are God's chosen people, but they are so wicked. Ah, but you got to realize that. You got to realize as a nation, physically, they're God's chosen people. That's a nation the Lord chose as his people. Spiritually, though, they're not. Spiritually, they're lost. They're going to hell. Okay, so let's explain this. Go to Romans 11. Romans 11. We're going to look at Romans chapter 11. So you got <clears throat> so you got to understand this. If there is a Jew today who is lost and unsaved and complete left-wing liberal and just makes you go makes you get disgusted, rich, fat elitist, etc. And you're like, "Man, this and this guy mocks Jesus Christ even." Are we saying that that person is a child of God, not a child of the devil? No, he is a child of the devil spiritually. Okay, so as a spiritual nation, spiritual people, that's where you see them as fake Jews. See that? So they are not real spiritual Jews, but physically as a people, they are. Look, you can't deny where they come from. They're born from Abraham's seed, okay? They're born from that, so you can't deny that. But spiritually, they're not. They're children of the devil. 
They're God's chosen people, chosen nation, referring to physically. But as a chosen people, chosen nation, spiritually, they're not. That's important to understand. See, they don't rightly divide. That's a problem with, I told you over and over again, the key problem with wrong doctrine is a one-minded concept. You never want to have that, especially when you study the book of Revelation. If you have a one-minded concept, I guarantee you're not just going to teach wrong stuff. You're going to teach plain heresy, and I mean plain heresy. Romans chapter 11, verse 28. As concerning the gospel, see, they are what? Enemies for your sakes. Look at that. See, these are not God's chosen people. They are not saved people like us. They are enemies concerning what? The gospel. See that? How do you get spiritually born again by the gospel? See, these Jews, they can be called fake Jews in that sense. But look, but you're not reading. But as touching the what? Election. Elect. Chosen. Right? See, they're still chosen. They're still considered chosen people. They are what? Beloved. But for whose sake? Fathers, see that uh, they're gener they're forefathers, physical generation. They're forefathers. See that? Because of what God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that your nation will rule over all the earth and etc., God cannot break that promise. Amen. Neither can God break his promise to an individual who is not a physical Jew, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, they don't see two promises right here. They confuse, they mingle all promises as one. Yeah. Why? Why do they mingle the two together, Pastor? Because these idiots think that they're so smart. I, I'm going to rightfully call them idiots because this has been the problem with every day and age in church history. Right. Some educated snob thinks he's smarter than the Bible, yep. smarter than God, that he can brilliantly combine two things and mingle it as one. You're of the devil. And you're a fake Jew on top of that, okay? So the thing is this, is that this is a wicked heretical doctrine. That's what the Catholic Church eventually came forth from. This was a teaching from Catholicism. During that time, the Catholic Church was not born. It was church fathers that time. They were introducing heresy after heresy. So because of this, the Catholic Church, they believed that they were the replacement of Israel. That's why it made so much sense during the Dark Ages the Catholic Church were very anti-Semitic. Yep. I mean, they hated Protestant, they hated Bible believers, but they hated Jews really bad. Jews had the, one of the worst, if not Christians. So that's why you got to realize that this is all Catholicism. This is all Catholicism, rooted and born. Okay, let's return uh, to our main text here. Here's another thing right here. This is kind of, this is kind of funny. It's kind of ironic. So people who are of replacement theology claim Revelation 2.9 as against the nation of Israel. But as a matter of fact, God was speaking about these guys, replacement theology. Yeah. That's what he was speaking about. He was talking about these guys who are fake Jews. See? So remember, during this timeline, Smyrna is what? That's when it started to get born replacement theology so the Lord remember the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy so this would be a perfect description referring to these guys at time who are introducing replacement theology but here's the thing let's look back in our main text here let's show this right here and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews so these are people who claim they are Jews and are what not okay so here's the thing this is not referring to the nation of Israel today. How do you know that, Pastor? Because the verse says, if they're not Jews. That's, right. That's why. Now, obviously, these people are flesh and blood. Their existence and being is Jews. These guys are not Jews. Right. How many people you see on the Internet and in your church is saying, I'm a real Jew, I'm a real Jew, and there is no real Jew from them, from Adam. They have no relationship to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob whatsoever in their physical bloodline. Imagine, you know, some Chinese guy comes out and says, I'm a real Jew, you know, I'm a real Jew. You are not, man. Who do you think you are? 
But who, but who teaches that? Here, here you see some black Hebrew Israelite. I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew, you know? Hilarious. Look at, uh, this is so hilarious in our day and age, you know? People claiming they are Jews. Look at the Jehovah Witness. I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew, mentioned at Revelation chapter 7. See, look at this. Who do you think God is speaking about? You think you like to attack this small little group that makes up what, like 1% of the whole world's population? But this makes up the greater majority of the population of heretics out there yeah. and religions. See, this is, a, this is more accurately referring to replacement theology, guys, not referring to the small little nation of Israel. Now, their favorite line is this one, though, the, the last part of verse 9, but are the synagogue of Satan. So that's their favorite line. So they want to say, which is the only group of people who have synagogues? Jews. So this is referring to the small little nation of Israel. But you got to realize this. This is, spirit, uh, this is so funny. Notice how contradictory this is. Verse 9. I know the blasphemy of them that, which say they are Jews and are not. Now, there's, we're saying right here this is physical, literal Jews, right? Yeah. They want to switch this. Replacement theology, remember, wants to switch this as a real spiritual Jew. So that's why they want to call the small nation of Israel fake Jews, spiritually. So they're going to try to make this spiritual, okay? This is referring to spi uh, spiritual Jews. Okay, if you want to make that context spiritual, look at the next part. But are the what? Synagogue of Satan. Now you want to uh, switch that as literal then? Right. Yep. See that? So notice right here that the synagogue of Satan, it's referring to Satan's group of people. Who do you think, okay, is Satan's synagogue a real genuine Jew like God's synagogue that time? No, right? Who do you think Satan's synagogue will be then? It's going to be Jews who are not his own Jews, not God's own Jews. Who is God's own Jews throughout the Bible? God's literal physical nation of Israel right here. Who is Satan's Jews right here? I'm the 144,000, says some Je Jehovah Witness at Revelation 7. Wouldn't he fit as Satan's synagogue right here? Sure. Satan's Jew? What about the black Hebrew Israelite? Oh, I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew. And, you know, who is he? Satan's synagogue. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous out there. Some Indonesian can say, I'm a Jew. Some Chinese guy can say, I'm a Jew. And some white guy says, I'm a Jew. And if he has a beard and then talks like this and the church will go through the tribulation, I'm a real Jew. You're not a real Jew from Adam, man. I mean, hilarious. Satan's Jews, man. Satan's Jews. Satan's synagogue. That's more accurate. That's more accurate. But let's even, I'm going to even give the enemies the benefit of the doubt. Let's even refer to these people as the nation of Israel that God says are fake Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. We're going to look at John now, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Let's even suppose that, okay? Which I'm actually open to. I'll be honest, I'm actually open to that. I think that there are some Bible-believing preachers out there who even say that. This, this is referring to physical Jews today who brag themselves that I'm a physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm a Jew, but then they're actually a child of the devil. Yeah. That can work. That can work. But that does not teach replacement theology. Spiritually, they're children of Satan. That's what the verse is pointing out. But that doesn't erase them physically. Here, let me give you big proof right here. All right, here's a good one. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and this is what replacement theology will quote to you. They like to quote John chapter 8. And verse 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father, right? So these are Jews saying, hey, Abraham is our father. I'm a real Jew. Jesus saith unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to uh, kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Verse 44, ye are of your father, the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. See? So it can make sense. A Jew saying, hey, I'm a Jew. I'm a child of Abraham. But no, God calls him a child of the devil. 
But did Jesus erase their physical lineage? No. They, you know what they skipped? They skipped verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. Wait a minute. What does that mean? Jesus recognizes them. They're Abraham's seed. But then again, later on, he doesn't recognize them as Abraham's seed. Is this oxymoronic or what in the world? No, it's simple. Jesus recognizes. There's no doubt. He recognizes them physically. They're Abraham's seed. But spiritually, they're a child of the devil. It's that simple. Okay, now let's go back to our main text. So this is how you can debunk replacement theology with Revelation 2.9. That is a favorite passage they will always quote to you. When they do that, you get ready to use these arguments on them, okay? 